Okay, hey everyone, this is Shepard from SocialDissonance.com. I just want to take you through a couple steps of uh, the way I edit my video to put together a podcast. Uh, there's a lot of questions I've had about what effects I use, uh, what sort of timing, what sort of programs I use, and I'm going to try and take a quick trip and show you all the different things that I do. Uh, so first off, you're going to need to have some video already recorded. Um, a good way to do that, the way that I do it, is using my Total Media Extreme. And so you can just go to uh, Record Video, and I already have the HeyPodge HD PVR plugged in and running. Just have to select it from the source. Okay, and there's actually a little bit of a delay from what you see on the TV to here, so you actually have to have your TV on and playing on that in order to record properly. But that's not a big deal. And these are the settings I have. YPRPB just means it's recording from the component. Audio is RCA back. There actually is an option to plug in optical if you have some sort of receiver and some very complicated system using that. In PC audio mode, we have two two channel stereo. Now, for the most part, you're only going to be working in two channels with Vegas. It'll be a little bit easier to work out that way. If you want to try and make your broadcast uh, surround sound, uh, go right on ahead. I'll show the device settings I have. The Most of these settings, actually, the uh, video proc amp, I've never been able to get it to actually do anything. I'm not sure if that's some sort of bug in the HeyPodge software or the ArcSoft software, uh, but I have it set to NTSC M. I'll put enable, okay. And then the format settings, th this actually does change things a little bit. And it's around here that you really kind of want to play with things. Uh, if you're doing a lot of videos all the time, uh, you're re never really going to need more than 6 megabytes per second at a variable bit rate. Yeah, you can put it at a constant bit rate, that'll increase the size of the file by quite a bit. Um, and not necessarily that much of a video quality increase. You could probably even drop it down to about 2 or 3. It really depends on what resolution you're recording at. Uh, for anything 720p or over, I'd say 6 is probably the lowest you want to go, but certainly anything that's 480p or 480i even. Um, keep it at around 6 or below. Disable the bling LEDs because those annoy me. Uh, Chroma 3 and Luma are at 3. Um, I found that that is fine. Um, I don't really know. I haven't really tested too much with playing around with those. Um, I assume that there's a certain amount of noise you could remove if you increase it or decrease it. And finally, that I, I found that at least for working in Vegas, uh, AC3 audio is what works best for me. So here's the video it's playing. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll record this video and I'll show you how to edit it in Vegas directly. So let's go to capture. I actually have it set up so the screen disappears. So it won't disrupt me, but at the same time, I can still see the elapsed time down here. Okay, and so we'll just record a couple seconds of this cinematic. Okay, so this is going to be about 20 seconds or so. And I have everything organized fairly nicely. Everything goes into the uh, video production video tab. And I already have Vegas open. I have a Vegas Movie Studio HD Platinum 11. It's uh, probably the most affordable product for people out there. It's You can usually get it for about $100 when it's on sale, or a little less. I think I paid about $70 for it. Um, you can, you know, if you have some academic license or something like that, you can get Vegas Pro. But all that allows you to do is be a lot more lazy in terms of the amount of video tracks that you have. There's a limit of 20 in HD Platinum. Um, I've never had that be an issue yet, as long as you're not lazy about the way that you organize your video setup. So let's go ahead and we'll find the most recent video that's here. This one from 12, 14. We'll just drop that in. Okay, and so here's the video in here. You can see it's tiny. Um, I have the video project set to what it's going to be output at. So it's 1280 by 720. Actually, I like to have a little bit bigger frame here. In fact, you see a preview here, 640 by 360. Generally, it's nice to have that match up right around there. There we go. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is make sure that it's cropped. So you take out all these black bars. Oops, I just muted it. So we go to the event pan crop. 
And I already have a default in here, but I'm going to try and show you what you'd want to do in order to create your own. So some of the issues you come into is uh, you don't want the aspect ratio locked. And you could actually have it set so that you move in only one dimension. And you want to get as close as you can. And actually zoom in. I recommend doing that. You can kind of see I can kind of see some of the corners there. Be a little bit more aggressive with the cropping than you think you need to be, only because otherwise there's some visual noise in the corners. Okay, and this will be about roughly it. You know, you, you take some time, go back and forth between the previews. I already have a bunch of presets saved, so we're going to go ahead and use that. It's Monster 100 PSP. See, it's a lot more clear in there. All right, so you see it's all there, but there's actually still some black lines. And that's because the, uh, the the aspect ratio of the PSP is still a little bit more widescreen. Uh, if you want to be a truly diehard uh, video aspect ratio purist, you could leave it that way. Otherwise, we're going to be going to properties anyways. Take off maintain aspect ratio. That'll stretch it out just a tiny bit. And hit disable resample. Uh, if you're going to be doing live action video, like actually recording yourself on film, the smart resample is probably not going to be that big of a deal, but for game footage especially, you want to disable the smart resampling because that'll give an added layer of ghosting to it. Okay, so we're almost there. And actually, you'll notice that I have a bunch of presets here. Normally, I would put the game, game audio under the music track and move that together right there. And you see they all stick together. Okay, next is probably the most important thing. Because we have the ability to change the way video looks with uh, various uh, color effects and things like that, when you view video on the TV, there's already a number of things that your TV does to it and that the game system assumes is going to be done to it to make it look better. However, when you're viewing things on a computer screen and you're creating a computer-generated file, uh, those things aren't done, and so we have to go in afterwards and add those effects. Okay, so what do we got here? Video event effects. Now I already have a preset here, and we're actually we're going to bring that up, and we'll just go through the filters that I've put in one by one. Um, I have to pay credit to somebody. Uh, I don't remember the exact name. It was a, a random YouTube video. I took their settings and I adjusted it a little bit. Uh, I would I tried to go back and find them to give them credit. I couldn't. But just so you know, these are not entirely from me. Um, I built it from someone else. And you can go ahead and take mine and build off of me. I really don't care. So you'll see that there's first a pan and crop. That we already did that. And you'll see it's kind of blocked in there. Because if we wanted to change it, we'd have to go back. But we don't. It's good. So the first thing that you'd want to create in your chain is the color corrector filter. And the things that we've set is the saturation has been increased a little bit. It's at 1.164. Gain is at 1.164. And the offset is by negative 18.6. Afterwards, we're going to adjust the saturation a little bit. The amount is 0 0.1440. Low is 0 0.2660. And the high is 0 0.1520. Finally, brightness and contrast. Uh, generally, you know, the brightness is very powerful. So it's even though it's only minus 0 0.01, that actually still darkens it quite a bit. Right, contrast is 0 0.05, and the contrast center is 0 0.60. Okay. So let's have to do a video that we've done from scratch. How about I load up a podcast? And we just kind of go through that. So I'll load up, uh, do the Halloween special. And I'll show you the various things that we've done with that. Okay. So you see there's a lot here at the top. This is any text that I'm going to put through uh, as just a, a note in the middle of the screen. I have a video overlay here. I'll just edit that. This is the copyright notice on one side and the socialdissonance.com plug on the other side. Uh, you can actually, in this version of Vegas, uh, just click and drag it around. There is a placement. But I remember being able to do that when I created it. <laughs> I don't really want to do it now, though. Let's see. 
Oh, wait, I missed... Yeah, there, all right, this is the legacy one. Sometimes I do legacy, sometimes I don't. Legacy, you, you can't just drag it around too much. Normally, if you're using the, the modern version, you can uh, click and drag directly on the video preview screen. Otherwise, you'll see I've put in... This is just a, a JPEG or a ping, I forget. This is a, right here in the video. And something nice that Vegas does is if you drag the video directly into something, it'll actually create an automatic fade. And so I used to only do star wipes, but I've since decided to grow up just a tiny bit. And everything does a fade wipe now. You can change that default somewhere in here. Otherwise, it's you can see it's it's fairly simple. We have the voice sound effect, and there's actually a couple ways to do that. Um, you know, I've got Skype right here. Another program that I have, let's see if she's up here, is Pamela. Where is she? And this is a program I've purchased. Uh, it's about, what, $10 or so? And it allows an automatic recording of all Skype conversations. That's actually not our main format of recording audio, but uh, it's a good to have as a backup. Uh, Christian will actually record the audio for us. I think the way he does that is he just has his second computer recording all audio in and just kind of leaving it at that. Or finally, if you're recording entirely on your own and you have no money, you can always record using Audacity. Just make sure that if you do record anything, I'm not going to record it because I don't want to script Camtasia. You want to go through and you want to... Actually, hold on, I can open up a file, can't I? This is a K.O. Han audio clip. And it looks like it may have already been edited, but maybe not. Okay, you always want to make sure you go through Effect, Normalize first, you can normalize to maybe negative one. And then you want to edit out any sort of sound. And so you'll find that, let's play it right here. After. So that's kind of a kind of a noisy sound right there, right? So go ahead and Effect, do Noise Removal. First, we're going to get the Noise Profile. Select the entire length. Go to Noise Removal again. And you can have a pretty strong noise reduction without it being too bad. So we're going to do a noise reduction of 31, 150, 15. Try and do that. See how noisy it is in the game. See? No noise. After a harrowing experience Ooh. playing Monster Quest after Monster Quest. Ooh, doesn't he just sound like silky? Silky smooth voice. Okay. And then, of course, export out into Wave. Throw it in wherever you want. And if that were your voice and you're recording over your own video footage, you just put it under whatever track you want. Okay, so we've done all the filters. We've done how to kind of assemble things. Um, there's a couple of different ways to go about rendering your footage. For Vegas um, Platinum 11, most of the time I'm just recording the whole block now. I used to do a lot of segmented videos. We'll just go ahead and we'll show what I have. I mean, these are my three most used settings. We have an MP3 version for the people that still, for whatever reason, listen to it as audio only, which to those people keep on rocking. Uh, we have a portable version, and this is actually a stock, this is a default one that is included, so I haven't edited that at all. I just use the PSP full screen, 1128 kilobytes per second. But we will bring up the, how do we bring up the settings? I haven't edited them in so long. I have to scroll down. Okay. okay, so this is the settings I do for my main YouTube uh, upload. Uh, there are all sorts of different ways to render videos depending on actually what like streaming format it's going to be put on. For YouTube, I've actually found that Windows Media Video works best. For whatever reason, whenever I upload to the Sony AV sor uh, source format or anything like that, these weird white blotches over the video and it's really annoying. So I think this is the default audio, constant bit rate, 192 kilobytes per second. Uh, for the video, I also have constant bit rate. Hmm, I would have thought I would have set it to a variable bit rate. Well, I mean, in any case, that's what it is. Uh, use Windows Media Video 9, 1280 by 720, uh, pixel, pixel aspect ratio of 1. I used to do kind of like a fake widescreen by putting it to 1.33 before I kind of knew what I was doing. And it kind of worked, but... Don't do that. <laughs> uh, frame rate of 29.970. Settings for keyframe 5. Override compression 3. Video smoothness of 90. 
Uh, you can increase that a little bit, make it a little bit more sharper. You don't need to. Use project settings. I have the project settings, I think, on high. I mean, and then that's it. You just click it and render. If you're going to do a multi-part series, or maybe you haven't yet gotten yourself a, uh, a account that can upload over 15 minutes at a time, though, but sometimes you'll find that it's you're incapable of recording, uh, like you have to keep breaking your things up manually. It can be really annoying. So I'm going to see if we can break this up. It's a little 14 minute chunks. So do a region here, part one. The way you do that is you press R, and you've got a little section highlighted using this little yellow. We'll do part two. Okay, now that you've got part one and part two made, if you just go through and you double click one of the green boxes there, you'll find that they, that area becomes automatically shaded. Go to Project, Render As, and go down to the bottom. Make sure that's checked is Render Loop Region Only. And what that'll do is that'll just render that one little section. So you could render this 14 minutes, go to Part 2, double click that, Project, Render as, back down here, and then again, select Render Loop Region Only. And what's made even easier is if you have a pro version of uh, Vegas, you can go through to the tools, and there'll be a scripting option, and that'll let you do a batch render. And it's uh, pretty much as easy as you think. You just check off uh, what formats you want it to render in, and then part one, part two, part three, part four. I've actually tested it out. You can do it under a trial account for Vegas if you want. Uh, if that's really that important for you, uh, go ahead and pick it up. But usually within about uh, one month or two months, as long as you are creating constant content and people are viewing your content, your account will get upgraded to uploads of greater than 50. Okay, so that should just about cover the video creation tutorial. If you have any questions, of course, post them in the comments. I'll try and answer them as best I can. Uh, for the most part, though, the key components is have a way to record video, have a way to record your voice, and have a way to mix those two things together in as best a format quality as you can. So until next time, this is Shepard saying good luck and have a good hunt.